label of fear because we find ourselves in situations where we cannot sustain ourselves. Yeah. The bills are piling up and the cash flow has become tight. We are robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep up with the Joneses. Because we now lost jobs that were supposed to do everything for us and now we find ourselves struggling to make it and the label of fear has wrapped itself around our hearts and our heads. Some of us are simply struggling to live life under the burden of the labels that have been placed on us. And so I thought it was fitting then, given the, the propensity of this issue among us, to look at someone who also wrestles with a label. Uh, because we know what it's like to live under certain labels, we can be sympathetic to Jacob. For his whole essence is captured in the label of his name. His label is found in his name and it embodies the difficulties of his life, his deceit, his lies, his role as, as a supplanter are prominent from the moment he is introduced because that's what his name means. His name means liar. His name means deceiver. His name means someone who cuts corners. So the time you meet him, you're already on guard because his label is written across your conversation. And I would, as a side, wonder what would happen if the labels that we carry were actually visible. If when you came into church, folks could see past your facade and see the labels that you wear. I wonder what would happen to church if suddenly we knew what it was that was really guiding you as you come into the house of worship. I think for a second we'd all get shocked. Oh my God, I, I didn't know she was wrestling with this. I didn't know he was wrestling with that. But after a few minutes of raw shock, we would realize that everybody in here wrestling with something. So we can examine the text and find maybe some hope for ourselves and how to live with the ladies. I, I would argue that Jacob doesn't even realize how deeply his name has affected him. I, I would if you would, if you, if you still have your Bibles open, go up a few verses to the ninth verse of that same chapter in the 32. Uh, 32nd chapter of Genesis. If you were to high, uh, go up and, and raise your glance a bit, you would see in that ninth verse, he says, as Jacob begins to pray, O oh God, my father, of my father Abraham and of my father Isaac, O oh Lord, who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I'm not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all of the faithfulness that thou hast shown thy servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill all of us, the mothers and the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. It is clear from just the prayer that Jacob has internalized the promises of God. In his prayer, he brings to remembrance the the direction that God provided him and the promise that God had made to him. God, you said you were going to take care of us and now here I stand and my brother Esau is right on the other side of the river with his company aligned and I know he's still mad because I stole his birthright and now is my day of reckoning. Don't you know that the dirt that you do will eventually catch up with you? Another for another day. There my brother is and I know he's upset and Lord, I don't know what's going to happen with us. He understands the problem and he understands the dilemma, but he has gone to God and asked God for help, and it's clear to us he knows what God is capable of doing, and yet, in spite of noticing the, or knowing the promise of God, he has reverted back to his own nature, for he has divided his family into two camps, and he sent them over the river. The first camp went over with gifts and presents so that they might appease or bribe his brother, and then he sent the second camp across the river so they could give him some more gifts in the hopes that maybe Esau would not be as upset and take his vengeance out on him. I'm praying to God to deliver me, but at the same time, I'm going back to my old tricks to try to figure my way 